Well, good morning, everyone. And it's lovely to be here this morning with you. As I say, it was lovely to have both congregations together last week, but it's lovely to be here in Lone Ends. As I said last week, it's something I've been praying for. I'm sure you've been praying for this moment as well. And we pray that as we come together as God's people, that we may know the Lord's leading in all that we do. Because isn't that why we're here? Because the Lord dwells in our midst. But before we start, I've just got a few announcements um, for us. Sorry, there's probably more than there normally is, but I'll go through them quickly. Uh, Khalid Vintage Enthusiasts uh, have organised an outing on Saturday, the 1st of October, um, to see uh, Neil Porter's collection of David Brown tractors. So if anybody wants to be involved in that, um, if you contact Mervyn Ray or Andrew uh, Mackey, from Khalid by Monday the 26th of September. As well as that, just a reminder, the Bulls uh, in Lone End is not on tomorrow night, but will happen next week, next Monday night. Uh, also, our parents and toddlers start this week on Wednesday at half past 10 in the church hall. And please let anybody know who could use that. We, we really do think that's such an important ministry here. Uh, a really good way for us to build connections with people in the local community, um, but also a way for us to befriend with the goal of seeing people come to Christ. So if you know people who can go to that, brilliant. If you don't know anybody who can go, but you're free that morning, we would love people to be there from the congregation. Not necessarily just to help, but to befriend, to get to know, to provide an environment in which people can see Christ through us. As well as that, uh, Khalid PW, warmly welcome those in Lone Ends to a quiz and pudding night. That's going to be on Monday the 3rd of October at 8pm in Khalid Church Hall. And that's not just for women, that's for everyone. And even better, not only a quiz, but I'm assured that there's buns and cakes afterwards as well. Yeah, I think that perked our interest up anyway. And that's going to be run by... Jennifer and James Hyde. So all the the money to raised to work will go towards Khalid PW funds and PW mission funds. And if you want to get involved in that, if you want to go to it, if you'd let me know, and I'll let Vanessa know in Khalid. As well as that, there's going to be a McMillan Cancer Morning on, um, on Saturday from half past ten at Khalid Church Hall. And finally... Um, midweek will recommence, um, not this week, but next Thursday night at 8 p.m. And we would love as many people to be involved in that as possible. I know sometimes midweek can be something that, which brings us with fear. I wouldn't know what to say or what to do, or I, I just wouldn't be good enough to go. But perhaps maybe if that's how you're feeling, that's maybe the best place for you. Because we want it to be a place where we learn together. It's not going to be a place where you're going to be put on the earth the spot but really where we want to encourage each other to get into the word so if you remember that will be the next week and we're going to do acts but these are the announcements but we're not here just to hear what's going on in our church our community we're here to worship the lord our god and a number of years ago i had the opportunity to go to israel for a month and during that time it never rained once Four weeks and not even a drop of rain. Luckily for me when I was there, we had always access to drinking water. I reckon for those in the time of the, of the Psalms, that wouldn't have been the case. They would have known what it was like to really thirst. And actually as the psalmist, he looked at that thirsting and remembered how he was longing for water. He's reminded of how we should long for God. And so this morning, we're going to, as we start our service, we're going to just meditate on the words of the psalmist from Psalm 42. Listen to these words, and may these be a prayer to us as we come to worship. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go to meet with God? And that's our prayer this morning, not just that we go through the motions of a church service, 
but that we would have a hunger for God, a hunger that will not be satisfied in anything else except for him. And with that in mind, we're going to come in our uh, first item of praise and we're going to echo those words from the psalmist as we sing the first item of praise, as the deer pants for the water. And after that song, if, you, if you're physically able, we're going to remain standing and we're going to recite the words of the Apostles' Creed, words which unite believers not only um, here in this building, but right across the world throughout the ages. Let's stand as we sing. words the Apostles' Creed will hear and if we say them together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And I suppose in some ways as we say these words, we're saying words to Christians all across the globe, right across the centuries of utter together. And in some ways, it's a reminder that as we worship today, we are part of something bigger. We have been part of something that has been going on for centuries. And that's how we're united to one another through our faith in Jesus. And the scriptures tell us, trust in the Lord at all times, O people. Pour your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. 
Isn't that a wonderful promise that as we come, whatever we're going through this morning, that we come to a refuge, one in whom we can find peace. And that's what we're going to do now as we spend some time and we prepare our hearts as we come in prayer before the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we affirm that you are the Almighty One, creator and governor of the whole universe. The one who abundantly provides for the various wants of your creatures. Lord, each day we are reminded that it is you who brings up the sun to start the day. And it is you who replaces it with the moon to initiate the night. Each and every day we are indebted to your faithfulness. And without which we couldn't even survive one moment. Lord, teach us to rely on you. May each sunrise and sunset be a reminder of your sovereignty over all. And may we in turn respond with lives of worship to you, our King. Lord, we pray that you, thanking you that you have made us to find fulfillment in you. And only in bringing you glory and enjoying you can we live as if we have been created to live. Lord, we thank you that you have revealed yourself to us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we can see who we truly are. Teach us your ways, O Lord, and grant us understanding. We pray that as we worship together this morning as the people of God, that you may create in us a hunger for your words, which reveals to us who you are. Lord, we know that we are often weak and frail in mind, We look in all the wrong places for the things that we need most. And so we ask that you would give us strength to focus on you so that we may grow in knowledge of you and love for one another. Lord, your word tells us that if someone says that there's no sin within them, that he is a liar. And so we come in humble confession and we ask, Lord, that you would forgive our many sins. Lord, we confess that we have not treated the Sabbath as we have been called to do. We have treated it as if it was any other day. We have done what we wanted, when we wanted, how we wanted, without much regard to you. We have at times failed to prepare our hearts and minds to truly engage in worship. We have at times shown to others in that our gatherings are not important by our infrequency to gather together. Lord, we pray as we confess these are many sins, that you will not treat us according to our sins deserve, but instead that you would avert your wrath through the precious blood of Jesus. And so those who are of faith in Jesus, we look to assurance that is only found in him. In God's word, it says this, therefore, there is no condemnation For those in Christ Jesus, to this we hold on. Renew us to walk in your ways, O Lord, and bless our gathering together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just another announcement um, I forgot to make. There will be creche available today after the children's hymn. But going forward, we'd love for other people to, to, to be able to help with that really important ministry. And if you can even give up just a... A little bit of your time, please speak with De- Diane Spence. So we'd really encourage that if you can. Thanks, sir. Please, if no, have with me. But anyway, boys and girls. Adults will have a birthday, but when we have birthdays we want to celebrate oh oh, that's for the birthday bucket is it very good okay thank you grace because as we've seen even last week it was lovely many people said well how was phoebe's birthday and i know people were praying for that and we want that to be normal part of the church life don't we that we celebrate with people in the midst of life's joys and also there's times of sadness as well well, boys and girls, just want to come up to the front because, you know, I feel you are very far away. You're, you know, I get a bit lonely up here when I have nobody else to talk to.
I'm sure you can get in there or you can sit on the floor, wherever you want. <laughs> there you go. It's good to see. It's all filled in. Wait, so I'll move this out of the way. Don't you worry. Music group, you can blame me later. Well, how's everybody this morning? Is everybody awake this morning? Yeah. They're awake over here, over here, I think. Boys and girls, can anybody remember what we, anybody who was here last week, can anybody remember what we were talking, we were talking about signs in church, can anybody remember the sign that nobody, everybody always reads? Can you remember what it said? Chloe, do you remember the sign? What was your sign that everybody reads? Yeah, no, it wasn't the green one that are. There's a sign that everybody in this church will have noticed. I'll give you a clue. Do you remember? Smile, because, do you know, we know everybody will look around and say, was I welcomed into church or not? And does, was this a welcoming? Was it? How do, we, how do we welcome people? We smile. And we talk to people. And you know what I want to encourage you? Because I was talking to some mummies and daddies and grannies and grandas last week. And you know what they said? They said some of the children welcomed them to church. I was really happy. And I would love if next week when I'm talking to more mums and dads and everybody else in the church, they say, the children welcomed me in church. That'd be brilliant. But this week, uh, I, I want to think about somewhere that I go. I'm going to give you some clues. It's somewhere which I go and I bring smelly shoes. I had them with me, but they're in my car, so that's how much I... Smelly shoes, okay? I bring a t-shirt. And I bring some shorts. What do you think? The gym, yes. The gym. And why do you think I would go to the gym? Why would I go to the... Why would anybody go to the gym? Well, that's a good question, probably. What do you think? Get stronger. Well, if you've seen these muscles already, I'm pretty strong already, but I do need that. Yeah. Do you think it's important to keep physically active? It is. Okay, well, do you know my only problem is, I, I'm sure some of the adults will agree with this, sometimes you start off at the gym and place like this, and you're going really quick. Do you know what happens after time? Is it always easy to go? What things maybe stop you going and doing exercise? Do you have any ideas what things would maybe stop you from wanting to go? Well, how do we feel sometimes in the morning? How would you, how would you feel? Sometimes you're sleepy and you get up in the morning and you're like, oh, I can't be bothered. Do you ever feel like that about things? Are, are any other things that would stop us from going? Yes, Anna? Your legs get sore and say, it's too much work. It's too much work. I don't want to go because my legs are sore. Or maybe you could say, it's too boring. If I was feeling like that, how would I keep on going, boys and girls? Have you any ideas that would keep me going and so that I'll keep trying to be fit? What ways could help me to keep going? Any ideas? What if people asked me if I was still going? Would that help? Dave, are you still, going out? Are you still working out? Would that help? I wonder if it would help if someone went with me and cheered me on. Do you think that would help me? I wonder if someone, I'll give you, I'll show you this wee card. What do I have with me? Can anybody tell me what that is? What is it? It's a card. Do you know, as a ballerina man, you know what would help me t to remind me of the cost? You see, when I'm tempted to skip going and do my exercise, I remember that it costs lots of money and that'll keep me going. And boys and girls, I want to talk to you this morning about something which is more important than our physical health. I want to talk about our spiritual health. Do you know what that means? That means about how strong your, your faith in Jesus is. Because you know what? God has told us not necessarily go to the gym. He has called us to go somewhere even more special. Where do you think that would be? And you are here this morning. I'll give you a clue. Where does God call us to go? Yes. Go to church. And you know, church, you know the gym makes us strong like this. Well, do you know, going to church makes us strong for Jesus. But what kind of things stop us from church? Yes. Being sleepy. I feel a bit sleepy sometimes. Yes, that's sooner. What other things stop us maybe wanting to go to church? Yes. Do 
doing other things. That's another good reason. We're like, oh, there's football's on or this is on. Oh, I'm too busy to go to church. Or maybe sometimes, I don't know if you ever say this. I'm sure they never say this in those ends. Not so boring. You ever say that? Some people say that. But you know, how can we encourage you to keep on going? Do you remember I said at the gym, we can encourage each other. When someone's not there, we say, we miss you. Maybe we could cheer each other on and say, keep going. And what did I remind myself in the gym? What did this card remind me? How much it cost. Well, do you know, it doesn't cost us anything to go into church. But do you know what? How much it costs God so that we could be here? Yes, Hannah. Zero pounds. It cost Jesus his life so that we could meet here. So boys and girls, I want you to remember that if you want to be strong for Jesus, that it's really important you're here. And mums and dads and grannies and grandas, I would just really encourage you. I know sometimes it's really hard. Kids are tired in the morning. There's lots of other things to do. There's sometimes they can be agitated in church. But you know, the greatest gift that you can give the boys and girls is bringing them to church. Because I know that actually even more important than being physically active is having a faith in Jesus. So boys and girls, I want you to encourage me with the gym. But you know, when I see you, I'm going to encourage you about faith. I'm going to ask you what you're learning at Sunday school. And I'm going to encourage you to be here. So we're going to pray for you. And then uh, you can go back to your seats. Dear God, we want to thank you for the boys and girls here this morning. We thank you that you love each and every one of them. And God, we thank you that they are part of this church family, not just going here, but they are loved by the people who come here every week. They were prayed for. Lord, we pray that at times where it's hard to go to church, where we can feel uh, demotivated, that Lord, that we may help one another to meet together. God, we just pray that you would give us a vision of who you are and help these boys and girls to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, you can go back to your seats. Thank you so much for listening and participating. And we're going to have a, a song now that uh, hopefully you'll be able to be involved with as well. We're going to sing our next one. We're reminded of what we're talking about there. We're going to sing, Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning.
360. As we prayed last week, we're going to continue to spend some time reflecting and remembering the significant day that tomorrow is as a nation. As we say goodbye to a much loved monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, and as we give thanks to God for her life, we remember her family and the many who feel the pangs of death that has been exposed from her death. So we're going to come and we're going to pray for her as well as the other things that God has placed in our hearts to pray for. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that the, for the words that you bring to us. Lord, words of comfort, words of strength, words of promise. And God, we thank you that as we come and pray to you now that our words are not incidental, that these are not just mere ramblings, but instead that you treasure and delight in the prayers of your people. For God, we know in the scriptures that you tell us that we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, who even at this very moment is at the right hand of the Father, interceding on the behalf of those here in Lone Ends. God, we pray that as we come, that we will be mindful of that wonderful scene. That we may come with boldness and confidence as we pray for others. Lord, we pray first for the surrounding area of Lone Ends and the Seven Mile Strait. We know that many folks around us are lost in their sin and don't even know it. They are like sheep without a shepherd, wandering, or wandering aimlessly through life. Oh Lord, we see the darkness of our society and how evil is called good and good is called evil. We see how the enemy has captive, made people captive and we see the devastating effects that it has on them. Lord, we pray that you would raise up within us a godly compassion for the lost so that we would not merely have pity for those we come in contact but that we may respond with a godly compassion which models the very witness of Christ to those he came in contact with. Lord, we, may we not look at the lost with hard, judgmental hearts, but move us to pray out of a sense of love so that the lost may be found, so that the blind may come to see and that the deaf may hear. Lord, we pray once more for a great harvest of souls in this area, that many may come to know Jesus as Saviour. Lord, we confess that sometimes we're filled with doubts that such an amazing thing could really happen here in Lone Ends. But we know that nothing is impossible for you. Fill us with a longing for those who don't know you. Lord, we pray also for the new and exciting gospel work which has been established in West Belfast under the leadership of the Reverend David Murr. Lord, we pray for David as he gets used to a new kind of ministry and begins new gospel initiatives in that area. We pray that you who have given him that desire to uproot from Knock into that area would so equip him with all he needs to share the gospel. Lord, we acknowledge that there hasn't been much reformed witness in that area over the years. And so we know that the spiritual warfare involved may be intense. Give David protection and strength as he fights in your strength. We ask too that you may bless and lead into meaningful relationships with folks in that community. So that many may know of your love. Finally, we want to give thanks for the life of the late Queen Elizabeth II. God, we want to thank you for the powerful testimony of her life. We thank you as we hear tributes on our news of people who were touched by her love and grace. But God, we know that, that those testimonies are in part testimony of your love and the transformation that you made to her life. We pray, Lord, that her legacy may not be her kindness and her goodness but may it lead others to saving faith in her Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as people who prepare to say goodbye, we pray for the arrangements of tomorrow's funeral. 
Lord, we pray that it may go smoothly. But more than that, Lord, we pray that for those who take part in that service, that they may not miss an opportunity to boldly proclaim the faith of the Queen. And so may the person of the Lord Jesus Christ be lifted up so that people may come to glorify him. Lord, we pray that those listening, that captive audience of millions and millions and millions throughout our world may come to a knowledge of who Jesus is. We pray particularly for the royal family who feel Queen Elizabeth's death so keenly. We pray that they may draw strength and comfort from you. Or we pray also for the many others who this death is so complicated. Lord, in many ways it brings back their own feelings of grief. We know for many in this congregation as well as many throughout our country that it will be extra poignant this funeral service tomorrow. Lord, we pray that you would help them in their own grief to lean increasingly upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And before we come to the reading of God's word, we're going to prepare our hearts as we come together and we sing our next item of praise. Focus my eyes. And as we do so, we're, we're asking that we would zone out of the things that are maybe distracting us and that we would focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, whose presence is among us. So we come and we sing. The Bible reminds us that all men are like grass and their glory is like the flower of the field. The grass willers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And we come and we stand upon these words as we come to hear from Scripture and allow Scripture to speak into our lives. So if you have a Bible, um, if you would turn with me, we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to look at verse 19 to 25. This is the word of God, and through the word of God, we hear and see the mind of Christ. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have a confidence to enter the most holy place, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised 
is faithful. And let us consider how we spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. May the Lord bless this reading to us. Let's pray. God, we want to pray. We come and we pray and we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are speaking, God, that though we cannot hear you with our ears so often, that, Lord, through your words, that you communicate truths deep into our soul. God, we pray that you would focus our eyes as we have been praying and open our ears so we can hear of your wonders in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wonder what your routine with regards to Ian is in your family. In the Morrison household, we are creatures of habit. If you were to call in at the manse at any, any given night, probably around half past five, you'd probably be greeted with the same scene. You would see our family seated together around the kitchen table with the boss sitting at the front of the, or the, the head of the table. For anybody who doesn't know who it is, it's Phoebe. We'd start with a quick word of grace and then we would tuck in. Those moments as a family are special in the rhythm of our family life. It's little wonder that famous phrase which they say, a family who eats together stays together. Don't get me wrong. They're not all perfect, I'll tell you that. There's always, she kicked me. Or they stole that off my plate. Or even eat that up or you'll not be getting the treat. Yet, spending those times together as a family are precious. It's there that we catch up on what's been going on during the day. It's there which we hear about the girl's latest interests. Or just simply laugh together. I wouldn't have it any other way. Those are, even though they're short times, they're special time in the life of our family. You see, eating together, sitting down, shows our priority as a family. But actually, by eating together, that it shapes who we are as a family. It reaffirms the value that we give to each other. It shapes our identity as a family. And it enables us to react in whatever situation we're in. See, as we think of those habits that are in our life, they both show what we prioritize, but they also shape us into the, in the process. And that's not only the case with mealtimes, our fitness regime, or even just our bedtime routines. But God has designed what we're doing here together in corporate worship to do something similar. He's designed it to allow us to delight in him, but also to delight in one another. In fact, how we approach corporate worship Sunday by Sunday impacts our own spiritual health. The church will only be seen as the hope of the world when believers in Jesus prioritize meeting together. I'm going to ask you a question, and you can search yourself. What brings you here this morning? Is it maybe because you've been, your family have been connected to loan ends for the generations? Maybe it's because you're nosy and you want to hear who this new minister is. Maybe it's because you've been going through a particularly hard time. And you need a spiritual lift. There are many good reasons to go to church. But the primary reason isn't how we feel. Or even what we can get out of it. We are able to prioritize gathering together in corporate worship. When we realize that we have been made to worship. You know sometimes when we come to church. We can so easily fall into the mindset of thinking. What we do here is just like what we do the rest of the week. We can treat it a bit like going to the orchestra or the vintage rally group or the local football team that we maybe watch. But can I tell you something this morning? There's something radically different to what we are doing this morning than anything else that you, can do, you do in your week. See, other things, we usually we join in their own terms, don't we? And so naturally, often it can be about us. But corporate worship is not done out of our own initiative. Hear this. 
Each time that we come together as a church family, something supernatural happens. Each time we come together in a spiritual sense, we are being transported to a different realm altogether. Each time as we come to corporately worship, God is drawing us right into the very throne room of heaven. It may seem to, like a hyperbole to say, but worship really is the most important thing that we ever do. Hear that? Worship is the most important thing that we ever do. Because we've been made to worship. Although in a sinful and fallen world, often we worship the wrong kind of things. Nonetheless, each and every one of us were made to worship something. So whether you're a believer here or not, we all worship something. As the reformer Martin Luther once said, whatever your heart clings to and confides in, that is your God. That is whatever you looked for as your ultimate hope, whether that's uh, affirmation, whether that's finance, whether that's anything else, that becomes what we worship. And the Bible is very clear that when we worship anything other than God, it severely damages our own hearts. And you know, that creates a real problem for all of us. Because guys, if, if you're anything like me, your heart is an idol factory. Sometimes I feel that I put my hope in anything but God. But isn't God so gracious? God knows our fallenness and how easy we can take our eyes off him. And knowing that he gives us opportunities to reset. For as we join together to worship this morning, that's what he is calling us to do. It's a recalibration of our hearts. It's a call to take our eyes off ourselves and what we're going through and to lift our eyes once more to the glory of God. And you know, as we do that, as we see the real thing, that no longer will we go after the imitations. See, we have a tendency sometimes we come to worship to, to think that we can initiate it. The Bible is clear. God is the one who draws us into worship. Without God doing so, we cannot worship. We could come to church each week. We could sing the songs of gusto. We could engage with the prayers. We could amen in the sermon. But unless God has called us, that we're not worshipping. As John 4 verse 24 tells us, God is spirit. And his worshippers must worship in spirit and truth. See, that is faith in Jesus Christ. That's believing that Jesus is God, that he came to die for our sins, turning away from our idols and onto him. And it tells us as we do that, that we are welcomed to worship. That the spirit then is able to draw us into relationship with him. In the Old Testament, these believers, people who believed in God's promises, were called an assembly. Their corporate identity as believers centered around assembling together to worship God. And when the New Testament writers were looking for a word to describe the new covenant believers, they used the Greek equivalent of that word for assembly. The word ecclesia from which we get church. See, part of our identity as believers isn't only an individualistic one. But we all, if we are Christians, we have identity that sur- which is centered on meeting together. See, what happens when we gather together will enable us to live for Jesus during the week when we're scattered. And so we must prioritize what God has called us to prioritize.